Alright, hey guys, She Detector here. So today I'm hunting at a local beach. Um, I've hunted here before a bunch of times. <laughs> um, and I'm out here, it's almost low tide, so I think low tide is still in about two, maybe three hours. So I'm going to be able to hunt a good bit of area out here, which I'm really excited because I drove by yesterday, was it yesterday? No, the day before, um, on Friday, and there was a lot of people out here. Most people had the day off because it was um, Good Friday. So there was a whole bunch of people out here in the water. So I'm really excited to get out here and see what I can find. So I'm out here today. Let me show you all here. This is the white beach hunter ID. I've been hunting with this machine for a little bit. And this hunt is going to be completely in the water. Um, and the reason why I'm wanting to do it completely in the water is because I wanted to play around a little bit more with the coil in the water. I've mentioned in my past videos that the coil on this machine does tend to float. And I did mention it in my April Fool's video, um, that the coil does tend to float. And I know a couple of y'all have said that this coil was made to have a neutral buoyancy, which I completely understand that, I get that. So, I mean, if that's how it was made and that was the intention, then they nailed it right on. <laughs> So yeah, so I'm going to be in the water today and it's beautiful out here. There's not any waves, no chops, so that's great. There's not a whole lot of people out here yet, but they're starting to get here. So I'm hoping I can get in a good amount of hunting before it gets crazy crowded. Um, what else? Oh, my scoop. Okay, so this is my 8-inch T-Rex scoop. Now, I think about three weeks ago, I posted a video where I broke my actual scoop handle. It was an ash wood handle and I broke it, snapped it right down at the bottom. So, I contacted Ronnie over at the Gold Digger Metal Detectors and he sent me an Anderson scoop handle. Now this one, you can see the sticker, this is the Neptune handle. And I don't recall how tall it is. I want to say it's maybe 48 inches tall. And it comes with this nice little rubber grip up on top. So, you know, it's not um, too hard on your hand. It's not going to be um, causing you any kind of calluses or anything like that. And it does come with a screw to put on here. This is not the screw that came with it, though. My husband had drilled through the T-Rex when I had my wood handle. So he just put a bolt straight through the whole thing. And this one's, I believe, a little bit bigger than what came with the handle. So that's it. I put on the Anderson stickers. So here's that, that sticker. And it also has their website, so andersondetectorshafts.com. And then, of course, the Neptune sticker. But then I also put on one of my stickers. So this was my um, I like doing it in the water sticker. You can see that there. So now in case you didn't know, I had some stickers made and I'll go ahead and post pictures of those later on in the video. But I put this one on because I was like, well, I do like doing it in the water. And these are supposed to be waterproof and weather resistant. So I put it on my handle and we'll see how long it actually lasts being in the salt water. So let's see what else. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, like I said, I want to get out there quick before a whole lot of people start showing up. So I'm going to go ahead and head out and uh, I'm going to get set up and we'll get to doing some metal detecting.
All right, guys, so here are my finds for today's hunt in the water. Now, I told y'all I was going to be hunting entirely in the water today, and that's what I did. So here's what I found. So I eyeballed this eraser, and I picked it up. And then I eyeballed this rubber band or hair tie, so I picked that up. So that's what I found in the water today. Um, on my way out of the water, I kept the machine on, and I found this nickel. So this nickel is a 1964 nickel. And again, I found this out of the water. It was in the, like, the wet-ish area. So, I mean, I guess it was kind of still in the water, or it used to be. Um, so yeah, that's what I found. This is all that I found during my hunt. Okay guys, I wish I had more to show you than those three items, and really the one item that I actually found with the metal detector. I spent two hours completely in the water. It was about from knee deep to about waist deep water. And again, this was about an hour, well, two hours or so before low tide. So I went when the tide was still going out and it was completely out before I left. So I spent about two hours completely in the water and that was all that I found. And I was switching my settings back and forth between all metal and disc mode. Um, and it, I don't know, I, w I, would, I was primarily in disc mode, and then I would hear the machine make a noise. It wasn't, it wasn't like a threshold or um, an, a, this is definitely a target noise. It was almost like the machine was nulling out, kind of like, and not everybody's going to know, but the Excalibur, when you're in disc mode and you go over, usually over a really crusty bottle cap, it, it'll make like a beep, but then it'll stop, it'll null out, it'll just get quiet. And that's kind of what this machine was doing, it's kind of what, what the beach hunter was doing. It would, it would almost like it was trying to make a noise, but then it wouldn't. And I could just barely hear that in the headphones, so I would switch it over to all metal, and I would check it, and it wasn't a target. So I was like, okay, well I thought there was maybe a piece of iron, and so I'd switch over and nothing. So I was doing this during my whole two hours in the water, switching back and forth between all metal and disc. I would hunt in all metal, and I was adjusting my sensitivity if it was too chattery. So I was looking for anything. I was going to dig everything, and there was nothing to dig. Now, I know for a fact that there is at least garbage in this watery area that I was hunting in, because I've hunted here several times before, and I've found you know, junk, like junker necklaces, the, they're all rusty. I've found junk like that in the water and I know this beach was packed on Friday and a lot of people still go during the week, not just on holidays. So I, there had to have been something in the water and for whatever reason I wasn't able to find anything. This is not the first time that this has happened with this machine. I've hunted for two hours before in the water at Clearwater Beach and I found zero targets, not even a pull tab or a bottle cap, nothing. So this is the second hunt with the beach hunter that I've spent entirely in the water and I found zero targets. Um, <laughs> not good. Um, I don't know, and again I was playing with my settings all day so I was giving this machine plenty of opportunity to find something and I wasn't finding anything. Um, I don't know, I mean it's it's supposed to be for saltwater hunting, it's good to 25 feet. Um, I don't know what the deal was, why I wasn't able to find anything. Now I have had some people tell me that have the beach hunter that it it really only finds aluminum and you know we do that a lot with our machines if we're only ever finding this one particular kind of metal we're just like yeah this machine will find that specific kind of metal and that's it um, I don't know so I uh, I was really intending for this video to be 40 minutes long of nothing but straight water hunting and unfortunately I have no clips to show because I found zero targets in the water um, so yeah sorry about that guys this was my last hunt with the machine. 
Um, but I guess since I didn't find a whole lot of targets, I'll just speak a little bit about the machine and the coil. Now I keep looking over here because that's where the machine is. Um, the coil, again, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, people said that this machine was made to have a neutral buoyancy. So it doesn't sink, but it doesn't float at the surface. And it does pretty much do that. It floats kind of right in the middle of the water. Well, I would say about a foot and a half or so from the surface of the water. There are things you can do to combat the floating coil. There is a, a coil weight or slash coil cover that you can buy specifically for the Beach Hunter. I believe Kelly Co. has it for about 20 bucks or so. Um, and it's supposed to keep your coil down on the ground. So you can just buy something and snap it on easy peasy. You can also make something. I've had some people tell me that they got a sock and filled it with either sand or rocks and then they zip tied it to the bottom of the machine. So I'll use my x -Cal as an example. They zip tied like a sock right here filled with rocks. So it'll keep the coil down on the bottom. You can do that. Um, I've had some people say, um, what else? I think someone used some kind of plastic or something. But I've had a couple different people tell me ways that they got around it without having to buy the coil weight or the coil cover. It's entirely up to you. Me personally, I think it's pretty easy just to buy the coil weight. Um, you just snap it on. But it's up to you. I mean, everybody has rocks around their house and all you lose is one sock. So you can do that real quick and simple. And that will keep it down on the ground. Um, what else? My new handle. So here's that. This is the new handle for my scoop. This is for my T-Rex scoop. And I didn't get to use it as much as I would have liked today, obviously, because I didn't find very many targets to dig, so I didn't get to use it a whole lot. Um, I did get to use it a good bit when I dug up the nickel because that, I think it was about two scoops it took me to get it out, maybe three scoops. So I, I think it's great so far. I've not seen any issues with it in you know the couple of digs I've gotten to do with it. Hopefully next weekend I'll get to dig a whole lot more. But I will show you guys the stickers, so here are the stickers, not just mine, but also the stickers that came with the scoop, and this is from after today's hunt. They are looking great, none of them have come off, none of them look distorted or anything like that, so that's great. And I, again, this was kind of my test to see the stickers that I made are supposed to be waterproof, so this was kind of like my first test to see just how waterproof they are. And so far it's looking great, so in case anyone wasn't sure if you could put it on your scoop handles or anything like that, it looks like you can so far. Okay, again, I got the white Speech Hunter from Kelly Co. It's not mine, I'm not keeping it, I am sending it back. I just, I was able to test it out for several hunts. I've had this machine probably the longest, I think, out of all of them. Um, but we had a couple of holidays and stuff in there, so I didn't actually do videos with it. But I really enjoyed hunting with it. And again, a big thanks to Kelly Co. for letting me try it out. And this was my last hunt with it, so I'll be sending it back. My next video will be with an entirely different machine, so make sure you check out next week's video. Um, for this machine, there's really not much else I can say about it. It's great up on the sand and in the wet-ish stuff. Again, I wasn't able to find anything in the water on multiple hunts, so I don't know what to tell y'all about that. Take that how you will. I'm not going to say it's a bad machine in the water because I've not hunted with it in fresh water, so I don't know. Um, I'm sure a couple of y'all have gone fresh water hunting with it and probably found a whole bunch of stuff, and if you did, that's great. I wasn't so lucky. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it for the video. Um, here are the pictures that I told you guys about with the stickers that I made, so here are those. Alright, so I hope you guys like those stickers. Those are, you can get to those, I have a link in the description down below to my Etsy shop. You can go and check those out if you'd like to get one or some. Um, also, make sure to check me out on my Facebook page and my Instagram page. I have links to those also in the description below. 
And if you have any questions or anything, leave those in the comments section. I do answer everybody back, and I've gotten caught up from when I got behind a couple of weeks ago, so that's great. Um, what else? I guess that's pretty much it. Um, again, thank you for watching my video. Make sure to like it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, make sure to do that. And until next time, I will see you guys later.